Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on construction of the Frosty Air Coat Pattern. This pattern was designed for the Club Grace December subscription box. The Frosty Air Pattern features a really cute holiday coat with raglan sleeves and a hemline that includes four godets. In addition, a hat is included as well as the instructions to make a fur muff to keep your doll's hands nice and cozy. As we get started with the construction of the coat, we're going to quickly look at the pieces and the type of material that we're using. So here we have the front of the coat, the side front of the coat, the back, side back, four godet pieces, which are going to add a nice bell or fullness to the hemline, uh, front and back of the sleeve, as well as a collar. We're working with a velvet fabric with a cotton back. And then for the collar, as you can see, we're doing a little bit of a faux fur collar, and that's just going to give it a nice Christmas appeal. So I'm really, really excited about the way this coat turns out, and I hope you enjoy the construction. In order to get started, I'm going to take my scissors, quickly cut in towards the curved edges of each piece of the fabric, and then I'm going to sew the godets to the front section as well as to the back section of the coat. Now with those clips taken, I'm going to take my godet pieces and you're going to notice that there's two uh, notch marks on each side of the piece. This is going to go to the front section and to the back section. I just want to let you know that this material has a little bit of a stretch to it as you're working with it. So I feel more comfortable uh, sewing it to the actual fabric without pinning it too tightly so that as I feel it buckling a little bit, I can make some adjustments as I sew. If you like to use a lot of pins or you're working with a material that you're very confident with, go ahead and pin it as much as you feel necessary. So let's get these godets sewn to the back section and then we'll move on to the front. You will notice on the pattern piece, the notches, as well as the fact that you're going to sew up one side and stop one quarter of an inch from the top of the godet. We're going to leave that unsewn that so we can clip in towards the seam allowance and then create that second side seam. So let's go ahead and get that attached and we'll see how it looks after we give it a press. You can see when you press that seam open where you clipped the uh, seam allowance, if you press it that way, it's gonna create a nice seam for that second side. Otherwise you have a gap, you may notice, if you press it all to one side. Next we'll sew the godets to the front sections of the actual coat. As with the back sections, we're going to press those seams open and then we're going to sew the front side section to the front section of the coat. Now when I sew the side front sections to the front, I'm actually not going to use a lot of pins. I'm going to start at the top shoulder edge and work my way down around that curved edge of the bust. With a material with a slight stretch, I find that to be a little bit easier. 
But again, I encourage you to use as many pins as you find comfortable. With our front godet set into the front of the coat, we're actually going to grab the back sections and repeat the same thing by sewing the side back sections to the back section. With the back godet sewn in, we're gonna press those seams open and we're gonna turn our attention to the actual sleeves. So there's our back section and you can see how nice those godets look in there. And here's the two front sections. So that's gonna give a nice rounded edge to that hemline, which I think is gonna be great. So let's set those pieces aside for just a second and look at our sleeve pieces. We have a front and back to each sleeve. So you wanna be aware of which is which. And if you look on the pattern pieces, if you look at the top, the one with the longer uh, narrow tip, that's actually gonna be the back sleeve. So we're gonna pick uh, one of each, pin it together with right sides and sew the uh, seam that's gonna appear over the edge of the doll's arm. We're gonna press those seams open and get the sleeves attached to the actual coat. Once you have the sleeve seams pressed open, you also wanna turn the edge of the sleeve up a quarter of an inch and give that a hard press.
Now, if you look back at your sleeve, the one with the peak on it is gonna go to the back. So I'm gonna grab the back sections. I'm gonna pin it starting at the top of the neckline right there and sew that sleeve in place. We'll grab our front sections and sew the front of the sleeve to them. We'll take that over to the ironing board and press all of those seams open. So this is where we are so far. Please keep in mind that this type of fabric really has a lot of dust associated with it or little fabric uh, fluffs that are happening in the picture. I'm trying to keep it out with a little scotch packing tape by cleaning it up. But if you're noticing that, that's what all this debris is. The same thing is gonna happen also with this faux fur. So if you see a lot of white fluffies, I'll clean that up at the end of the project. You can take a little bit of packing tape around the edges and just get some of that extra fur off if you'd like to. That'll just help anything that's loose. And then you can get your sewing area cleaned up and move on to the next step of basting the collar to the actual coat. It can be helpful to base the collar lining to the collar before you actually put it to the coat neck lining. That'll just make sure all those pieces stay together and that you don't end up losing the lining underneath the pinning. So now that we have that in place, we're gonna pin it with right sides together to the actual coat and base the collar to the neckline. When you line the collar up on the neck edge opening, you should have a quarter inch of coat past the actual finished edge of the collar. Make sure before you move on to the next step that you check both sides of the collar. You wanna make sure you didn't miss any of that lining as you were connecting it at the neck edge. Since everything appears to be pretty good, we're gonna place the coat right sides together and sew the underarm seam and the side seam. Remember, you have turned the sleeve edge up a quarter of an inch, but in this case, as we sew it, we're gonna turn it back down. We're gonna match the underarm seam and then the hem of the coat on each side and sew those side seams. We're gonna repeat that on the second side.
with that second side seam sewn, we're gonna go ahead and clip into that seam allowance, give it a little bit of a press, and let's get a fit to the doll to see how the project is coming along so far, and we'll move on to working on the lining. Let me grab a little packing tape and get some of the fur off of the actual velvet. We'll grab our doll and get a fit, and then we'll move on to the next step. So I've slipped the coat on to our Grace Marie Fitzpatrick doll for that final fit. You'll remember that these cuffs are gonna turn up a quarter of an inch and I can still see the press mark there. So I think the length of the cuff looks good, the length of the sleeve. Um, I like how it fits through the waist. Keep in mind, if you wanna put something under the coat, if you want her to wear a dress, there is enough room that she could wear a little black dress. Probably nothing too bulky, so you could also use it as a coat dress without anything necessarily underneath it. As we turn it over, I think it's looking great through the shoulders. I'm concerned a little bit about the uh, fluffiness of the collar, but I'm hoping once we have the lining attached that it won't be too overwhelming at the neckline. If it does uh, appear that it is a little too fluffy, I might use something with a little bit less of a pile to it to make sure that the collar looks a little bit more distinctive and easier to see the outline. Other than that, I think it's fantastic. I love this velvet. It's really, really a beautiful Christmas red, and the weight seems appropriate for the godets, both in the front and the back of the actual coat. So with all of those things being said, the next step is to go ahead and grab our lining pieces, construct them in the exact same way that we put the coat together, minus the application of the collar, and then we'll get the two pieces together and almost be finished with our project for today. So you, here you can see the completed lining pieces that I've done for the coat. At this stage, all we're gonna do is place the lining to the coat with right sides together, carefully tucking the fluffy collar inside the two pieces, pin it all the way the, around the outside of the garment, so up the front, around the neckline and down, and leave an opening in the very back of the hem for turning the coat right side out. Remember when you do this step, you do wanna check both sides of the garment before you actually clip in towards that seam allowance in case you need to make any corrections. So let's go ahead and get that lining pin now and we'll get some of those final steps completed. Off camera, you can see that I've made a quick decision and that decision was to actually change the collar on the coat. I was really concerned that this uh, faux fur, although super lovely, would just overwhelm Grace's neckline. Plus I want to include in the pattern a little fur muff and I think this uh, weight and this type of fabric would be more appropriate for that.
So with that entire exterior portion of the lining sewn to the coat, we're just gonna check both sides to make sure that we don't notice anything unusual. And again, you have the option to turn the coat out right side out and then just give a good check before you actually clip in towards that seam allowance and that might save you some heartache if there were any issues everything appears to be pretty good so i'm going to do that quick check then i'm going to trim in towards that seam allowance turn the coat right side out and give it a press all right well this is how the coat's turning out so far we've got it turned and pressed and i think everything is really coming together well we have just a couple final steps and our beautiful beautiful frost is in the air coat will be complete we're going to go ahead and take a needle and thread and hand finish the back lining to the opening where we turn the coat we're also going to sew the lining of the sleeves to the inside of the sleeves add several snaps down the front of the coat and finish it off with some decorative buttons. Once I have those final steps complete, we'll get the final photographs on the doll, as well as add the elements that are also included in the pattern, which will be a fur muff and also a hat to complete the look. So come on with me to finish those steps and then we'll see how the project turned out. With all the snaps in place, the final step is gonna be to go ahead and sew on those black buttons. Once we get our buttons in place, we'll get those final pictures on the doll and see how the project turned out. Well, we've made it to the end of our sewing tutorial for today, and I think Grace is very pleased with her holiday coat. I hope you've enjoyed the construction of this pattern. If you have any questions, please list it in the comment section below. As always, I thank you guys for coming along with me on this sewing journey today. I really appreciate your time. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy holidays.